Welcome to the 67th Porsche Parade. We are at the PGA West Pete Dye Dunes Golf Course, and today is Concord Day. And how many cars roughly we have out there? A little under 200 cars prepared for this event. And then we also have a very special display on that side. Yeah, it's an incredible historic display with some significant cars all in one uh, little fairway. So we're gonna try to capture, give you a quick tour of the Concord as well as the historic display. So let's go. Be sure to log into your YouTube account, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. A crowd pleaser at the Concord is always the historic display. So we're gonna take you for a tour and show you some of our favorites. As 914 owners, <laughs> he's chuckling because mine's in pieces, we're gonna start with this beautiful 914. Yeah, this is a really special car. This is a 914-6 GT, 1971. Porsche made a basically factory race cars that were legal for the street. This one was owned by Eric Schrenninger, who used to be the graphic artist for Porsche. All those iconic posters from Porsche's racing history from the 50s, 60s, 70s, that's all Eric's car. And this was his personal car. It was a race car. It has the wide flares, the six cylinder hot rodded engine. Uh, it is in itself, it's a special car, but the fact that it used to belong to him makes it extra special. And this is known as the M471 option? Attention. Correct, it was an option you could actually the buy and make it yourself if you wanted to, but this was a factory built one. Posted. Crazy, let's go, there's more. Class RS. <clears throat> of course, this car is gonna catch your eye. This is a 1957 356A Speedster in beautiful mice and blue. Again. Isn't it cool that mice and blue has come back? So modern 992s are showing with mice and blue. It's like a hot PTS color, and this was a former race car. Speedsters were competitive way into the 70s, even 80s, as SCCA race cars. And this is where I'm gonna plug Renbo. If you wanna look up mice and blue and other, uh, other models that have applied mice and blue or some of the other colors that you're gonna to see today, check out Renbo.org. Next car. So we've got a lot of friends, so we'll be saying hi as we walk around. But this here is a very, very special car. It's a 1965 356SC, one family, uh, currently uh, under the stewardship of the son. The father bought it uh, from day one, had it delivered in Germany. And you know a bit of the story as well. Yeah, he said the father came in wanting to buy this car and they told him, we don't have it anymore. You have to get a 911. He didn't like the 911, went back. They had one allocation left for a 356 SC, and this is the one he got. He even showed us a photo with Hans Peter Porsche sitting inside of it. And how rare is it to find an original paint, original owner car that's 356? This is like on my wish list. All the paperwork, uh, there's photos of his mother with a, a baby bump, and he's the one that's in the belly. So how cool is that? And it's dolphin gray, which is another we PTS color that they still paint today. Static. On to the next the one. Organizer. So at center stage, this amazing spider with no paint. No, it's, it actually shows the aluminum bodywork on it, which is rare to see. They painted them silver, but this is actually aluminum. You get to see how you can almost see the hammer marks, how they handmade these cars. Before Porsche entered the fiberglass, the plastic era in the 60s, they reigned supreme with their uh, aluminum body cars. These were the original giant killers. This went after the Ferraris and the Jaguars, which are much smaller displacement, lower horsepower car, but they handled like they were on rails. So seeing it bare like this, you always think of those wooden like bucks that they measure things out on. And did you know, they actually didn't hammer the aluminum on the bucks. They, did their, the they did their whatever massaging of the metals and they put it on the bucks to measure it. They never hammer it on the bucks. But take a look in here, in the interior, look at all these significant signatures. Dr. Wolfgang Porsche right there. Ruth Libby, uh, Denise McCluggage, some of the big racers of the day in California. How special is it to see it all in its natural beauty? So here we are, Manny, in the office. You often refer to the Holy Trinity. That's right. Now, that's becoming four cars with Mission X announced. But for now, it's still the Holy Trinity. Uh, and here's two of them, the Carrera GT and the 918 Spider, two of the three Porsche supercars that they built and became instant icons. Now, that GT2 RS is special, but the third one is next to it. 
That's the 959, the first one, the first supercar Porsche built uh, that almost hit 200 miles an hour. It was uh, a marvel of technology back then. Unfortunately, they were losing money on each one, so they didn't build, they just built a little over 200 of them. But now it's something that everyone who collects supercars from Porsche, you need that to nice complete the trilogy. So here we are at the 959 in silver. Less than what, 300 of these were ever made? They were losing money on them. They couldn't make as many as they wanted. And they didn't. They weren't even available in the United States? No, in fact, it got to be almost a grudge match uh, between the US government and Porsche files trying to get this car in. You would not see a 959 at a, uh, a US event because they would come confiscate it. It even became uh, notorious that Bill Gates had one in Canada and was trying to import it in. Basically, uh, the government wanted them to crash test it, and Porsche said it's a 911, it's already been crash tested. Government said, no, it's a whole different car. So Porsche said, you know what, we can sell them on our own, we don't need the U.S. They shipped them all back to uh, Europe and did, ended up selling them. So when they finally relaxed the rule and let them in, that was a big uh, surprise to Porsche fans, but we got to finally see the 959 on U.S. roads. Now there are a couple of unique colors for the 959 interior treatments, but when you open the engine lid in the back, they're all the same color. Yeah, and it's uh, it's all-wheel drive, twin turbocharged, which hadn't happened yet except on race cars. It was, uh, they took the rain gutters off the car. All the stuff that we take for granted now was brand new back then. And this is, think about it, this is like 84 when the Carrera, 3.2 Carrera had just come out. So this was leaps and bounds above what a 911 was. And being a car from that era, you would think, how does it compare to today's modern cars? You and I have been lucky enough to drive the prototype 959. And when those turbos kicked in, hooey. It is uh, like a train hits you from behind. Lots of turbo lag, but wow, when it uh, comes on boost, you're holding to the steering wheel and keep trying to keep it straight while you're going in a straight line. Uh, but it feels inside like a 964. Really, uh, really unusual. Very familiar. Yep. On to the next one. In PCA, we talk about it's not just the cars, it's the people. And this car is one of those that demonstrates what it's all about. This is a very, very special Career GT 924, but the person that owns it is even more special. Marty Smith Haas, uh, racer. First woman, I think, to race at Le Mans. Uh, Le Mans yeah. uh, and I, I know her as the uh, pillow lady, the one who makes the, three, uh, the Porsche pillows. Official. That, uh, official, licensed, yeah. licensed by, that's right, part by Porsche family to make these pillows that uh, so no longer sells. Uh, we sell some for the PCA office, but you have to almost go for secondary sources to find these. And uh, wow, she's got herself a real Carrera GT. This was a homogulation special that Porsche had to build to be able to race this car at Le Mans. And this was basically a, a hot rod at 924 turbo uh, that was very competitive and was the originator of the 944. You see the flares on the car. You see the beginnings of the 944 with the wing. And it was a, a very significant car that never made it to the U.S. And this car's actually sort of been in hiding uh, because life goes on and she gets uh, she got busy and with racing and such and her husband Paul unfortunately couldn't be with us uh, for the, he's passed on but he is here with us in spirit he's got a full tribute to him in the trunk and uh, this is what it's all about. So being a child of the 70s I'm a huge fan of IROC cars in fact I own a M471 turbo look because it has fenders very similar to this and this car is I would say a tribute car? It's, <laughs> I love people who take like a rare car, a factory turbo look car, which you have one. Which I have one. A factory turbo look car and then turn it into something else. Right. And the, the, the body works. Talk about the Allison tribute. So this was from the 74 IROC series that Roger Penske uh, developed. Uh, before IROC started racing Camaros and Firebirds, it was actually Porsches, all the different colors. This one here is in particular in uh, golf blue, and they've got the they got the best drivers to race the same cars. This one was uh, uh, was it um, Bobby Allison was the uh, driver for this car, and they actually switched cars. And so, uh, Bobby Allison didn't always drive this car. They wanted to make it as fair as possible, which made for very exciting racing. Uh, but the owner here has uh, made a tribute to that series and. Uh, I think the golf blue is the perfect color for this and, car. And all the period correct parts to it. What a special car. And we're lucky enough where the owner of this car is in our region. And hopefully we'll see it we'll on see our it side exactly. of the world. Exactly. Come from California back to Maryland. Let's move on to some very special pairings of Carrera RSs. 
So in 74, that was the second generation of the RS, the first generation of the 911 RS are these two cars here. And we have a, a lightweight version that used to be touring, upgraded to lightweight. And then we have the touring version. Now you may ask yourself, they look identical. It's hard to uh, tell. What's what? an easy way to tell? The easiest way to tell is looking at the trim. You have rubber on the trim, you have decals on here. So when they went lightweight, they were trying to cut as much weight as possible. It wasn't about comfort anymore. It was about getting the weight down as low as they could. And every little bit, like the rubber trim, counted towards cutting the weight out. That's an I easy way. What I love most about the owners of these two specific vehicles is they take them out and drive it. And they drive it thousands of miles a year and they enjoy it. Yep. And without these cars, the new RS wouldn't exist. Exactly. More cars to come. So more recently, you've heard about the classic Club Coupe that recently went to auction. You've talked and heard about the maybe the 60th anniversary Club Coupe. But here's the one that started all, the first project. This is the first project with, uh, with Porsche and PCA when it came to anniversary cars. This is the 50th anniversary Club Coupe that debuted at the Hershey Parade and kind of set the tone for all the other uh, Club Coupes that started, including the Worldwide Club Coupe, which is also here in Brewster Green. Mm -hmm. And this one here, it was one of 50, a very unique color that was commissioned just for PCA. It's a Zuro California. Blue. Very yep. Blue. Very unique color, and it's great to see it out and about. And I believe you're the owner, and you actually drove it out from Texas? Texas. Texas. So it's great to see these in the wild. And if you haven't seen one in your area, seek one out. They're very special. Now, Manny, here is a car that I think you've driven before. This is the Bahama Mama that we did a one mile review on. <laughs> Kelly's car. Kelly Tepler's car. And where do you find four other Bahama yellow cars? <laughs> that in itself is rare, but what's even more interesting is that Porsche has brought back this color, and this is a PTS color you can put on a modern Porsche. So how cool is that, that you can have an older version of this and a new, newer version of this really iconic color? In fact, I think at the recent auction, at the PEC 75th anniversary auction, there was a Bahama Yellow Speedster, which I really encouraged Kelly to get, but I don't think he won that bid. It's uh, an amazing collection of having these four together and having the different body styles of the coupe and the soft window Targa. Now, I wish you could be here to enjoy all the cars here, and I wish we had more time to share with you all the cars, but you know what you need to do? Come out to the next Porsche Parade so you can experience all this in person.